Hey everyone. Hey everyone. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue. It's Friday, June 26th, and it's today's Cricket Chat, our live um, Cricket Daily program for uh, for all things Cricket. And uh, I'm gonna wait and say hello to people. Um, I am I'm breathless this morning because I've had just everything that could go wrong today go wrong this morning. I originally had planned for today a, a lesson on the new infusible ink pillowcases and I probably should have stuck with that plan because I then went on a tangent, um, a big tangent, and I started playing with um, this stuff. Good morning, Maria. I started, have you guys seen this stuff? It's called uh, wood veneer. And um, so I started playing with it yesterday and doing some really interesting things with it. And I kind of got off on a tangent and I was like, okay, this is not ready to present to um, you tomorrow. Uh, but it's really this really cool stuff. It's wood, but it's very, very thin and it cuts beautifully on the machine. This is what it looks like. Um, look, at, look at how it is. And it cuts beautifully on the machine, but so far I've only been able to do, or I, I've only been able to cut in ovals and in circles, and I started thinking, oh, okay, well maybe I could make like little plaques like this. Um, and then I started thinking, well, could you iron on or put vinyl on it? So this is my little corgi. Um, but this is vinyl, and I don't like the way that it came out. It's kind of like, uh, it's, and I can't seem to, so, so then I started doing the iron on. <laughs> and of course, it got all, all, all messed up, all messed up. So, um, not messed up, but just off on a tangent. So I started thinking, what am I going to do tomorrow? Um, and so then I started thinking, okay, what we'll do is we'll do print thin cut Anna Griffin box cards because they're gorgeous and I've been meaning to show you them. Good morning, April. Good morning, Bryn. I'm so happy to see you all this morning. Um, so yeah, I was thinking, all right, let's do the beautiful flowers in Design Space um, that are Anna Griffin. And if you're a Design Space customer, like a, a an access customer, um, there are just literally dozens and dozens of beautiful flowers that are print then cut. And I thought, oh, that we need to do that. But of course, my fifty dollar, <coughs> excuse me, my fifty dollar uh, <coughs> printer. <coughs> excuse me. Oh, I get too excited. Okay, my fifty dollar HP printer from Black Friday four years ago decided it didn't want to do print and cut in my in my printer this morning. So then I had to start all over again. So I've gone from pillowcases to veneers to window box cards and now I've settled on these flip cards um, which uh, are really adorable. Let me move you a little bit. So good morning. Good morning Constance. So these are called um, fantastic flip cards and I don't even know if I did them right but um, because this is the first time I did them and I literally did them 15 minutes ago but I wanted to show you how they work. They're like these little flippy things and I also want to show you how to get the um, sentiments which are available to you in design space okay and and how to put them on a card and how to find these cards in design space because there are literally dozens and dozens of Anna Griffin cards available and um, a lot of people don't know that and so I want to show you how to do that this morning um, and I'm sorry if I'm like oh I feel I feel like I'm like super rushing but we will can we will um, do a fantastic flip card um, and we will do a sentiment on the inside and um, I'm going to show you how to find them this morning. So how is everybody this morning? Good I hope. Um, boy it's been a really eventful week for us this week here at this household. Um, oh, in addition to finding out that my um, my tumor has shrunk and then I'm going to be having surgery um, we 
we've been doing a lot of work at the house. Yesterday was super crazy. That's probably what got me off uh, off track yesterday because they were they were working on my bathroom and my spare bedroom, and it was just people coming and going all day long. It was crazy. <laughs> so I'm glad today because there's nobody here and it's really quiet. Um, so I, I can I can actually regroup and get ready for Saturday night date night, um, which if you didn't know about that, we do a Saturday night date night here on Facebook. Um, it's called Cricket Date Night, and it's at 7 o'clock here on Miss Rita to the Rescue. It's live, and this week we are putting together a gorgeous lighthouse, and it's a paper project, a lighthouse and a lighthouse keeper's uh, quarters. Um, the file is from SVG Cuts, and I'm going to post the link. Uh, it is a paid file, but you can go ahead and um, and purchase it and follow along with me as we put it together. It is a 15 inches high, uh, bigger than a Lego, <laughs> than a Lego model for sure. All made of paper, and um, I'm using, uh, I don't know if I have it around here, but I'm using graphic 45 paper called By the Sea, which is really beautiful. I've already actually cut it out some really beautiful cutouts there. So um, I'm really looking forward to that tomorrow night um, live here on Facebook at 7 o'clock with me, Rita, Miss Rita to the rescue. Um, oh yeah, I love lighthouses and it's really starting to feel like summer around here. Um, just a little tiny bit about me if you're new. Uh, my name is Rita Cavicchio. I am uh, a a cricket product expert and um, have been for a number of years and I also live I'm a resident of a little town city um, north of Boston about 20 miles so the coast the beaches and everything that's sort of what I grew up with um, and I live in a town called Peabody Massachusetts and although we don't have any beaches in this town um, I live right next to Salem Marblehead and Gloucester and and it's just a beautiful I, I just love anything nautical so uh, this is a great um, this is a great thank you I this is a great um, project for us because I love the nautical stuff and uh, we're gonna have a blast tomorrow night so do definitely join me um, if you can't make it then you can catch it on the um, on the replay which I post on YouTube I do have a YouTube channel uh, we have over 300 videos most almost every single one of them are cricket related and they cover the gamut the Cricut Joy, um, the Easy Presses, Infusible Ink, the Maker, the Explore, everything, iron-on, vinyl, not a whole lot of vinyl, but anyway. So um, if you can't make a, a live video, go to the YouTube channel and catch it there, okay? Um, and definitely subscribe and follow me on Facebook because then you'll be notified when I do go live. So let's kind of get down to it today. Um, we're going to be uh, talking about finding and using Anna Griffin uh, projects in design space, okay? So that's why I have you in front of my computer today. And actually in front of my computer, I have a couple of these. Um, these are very, I think, very simple cards to make. And I'm going to show you all the different things that I'm going to try to get a little closer to so that you can kind of see. I want to make sure everything's in view. So um, this is design space and let me uh, save this so that we can come back to it. Flip cards. Okay, so we're going to save this and then we're going to start with a new canvas. So here we go. We're going to go new right here. So if you've been working on something you want to start over, do make sure you save um, because, you know, it, it's, it's unlimited amounts of save there. And, and uh, so you want to be able to come back and, you know, um, save as you go along. I tend to save well before I decide to cut because you never know. Things might happen. You know, I've heard people, they design things and then they, um, they cut it and then something goes wrong and they can't get back to their original um, work, which is, you know, everybody needs to save. <laughs> okay, so let's start new, and that's by clicking on this 
uh, button up here, new, and we're going to be looking at all of the Anna Griffin images. Do you know who Anna Griffin is? She's a, oh, she's a lovely woman. Um, I've met her uh, a couple of times now. Um, the most petite little southern lady. <laughs> I think she's from Georgia. Um, blonde and just so darling. And she is a really big fan of uh, like shabby chic and um, like really very floral. Um, sort of my, my style. I really love that pinks and greens and floral and stuff. And she has a huge company now. Um, and you see her often on HSN. Um, and uh, several years ago she started working working with Cricut more than several years ago. She started working with Cricut and she developed her own line of Cricut um, projects. So and she had her own machine and everything else. And then last year, around Christmas time, they announced that all of her images, and there's like 44 sets of images. Yes, she has lots of layers. She's very frilly. She likes to gild the lily. It, this, these are not simple. Um, these are not simple cards, but they're elegant and just beautiful. So um, last year, around Christmas time, they announced that all of her images that were already in design space and you used to have to purchase them. And I did, um, you know, and a lot, like a lot of other people purchased her, her um, images, but all of her images would now be available to access customers for free. So um, that was a big, that was big news last year. Um, and so I wanted to show you what they were talking about because this is not a small thing. Um, I'm going to images over here and I pick and I have brought up the image search engine. And the best way to see all of Anna's images are to go here, image sets. Okay, so click on image sets. And in this search box at the top, we're going to type in just A-N-N-A -N -N -A, apostrophe S. And it will bring up for us, let's hope, yes, 44 different image sets. And some of them range from like, you know, 20 images, uh, 40, most of them are like 40, 50 images. This one is 73. And this one here, which is a font, is like over 600. And there are all of these, all of these, and most of them are cards. Um, most of them are cards and there's a lot of print and cut here. There's some home decor. There's a lot of writing like sentiments um, and and even planner stickers. I was gonna do that today, but of course my printer. Um, there are these gorgeous print then cut uh, images, including vintage florals, butterflies, um, and all different things here. So if you are a fan of this sort of um, art or this sort of uh, kind of card, then this is for you to know. You need to under understand that all of these are available to you. And you notice that the a right here on the left hand side means that it's available to you if you're an access customer for free so you can play as long as you want on all of these designs and you don't have to stay within that particular image grouping so this morning like I said I was going to do a print then cut and I was going to show you how to do these window box cards um, yes they are Shelly you're right and um, Shelly is saying that her sentiments are great to add to the joy cards and we've done that before where we add uh, sentiment to the inside of a joy card so if you're a joy owner um, this is still good for you to know because you can still put the the image or the you can use parts of these as well you know you cannot use the print and cut um, with joy but because there's no sensor in the joy but you can use definitely use the sentiments and a lot of these wonderful images this is the one that we were we were going to work on this morning um, it's a box card you know how much I like box cards and um, it it's she calls them window box cards which I love and it actually has all of these wonderful 
wonderful print then cut flowers that you kind of it makes a bouquet of print then cut flowers that um, you send out just gorgeous and uh, but unfortunately my printer I think I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and buy a new printer so um, and at any rate so I wanted to just kind of like show you all of these things that are available and including um, some things that are seasonal. There's a wonderful set of Christmas images. This is called uh, Anna's Christmas Kitsch. I did these last Christmas for people. These are so much fun, these cards. And as we head into July and we do our Christmas in July, uh, we, might, we might do a couple of these cards. They're so cute and they're great to have on hand ahead of time. Um, easy to do and they're more like paper piecing one of the other someone mentioned lots of layers one of the things that she's known for is being very like layered focused and I want to show you two of the um, two of the card um, sets two of the image sets that she does let me see if I can find them they're called lovely layered cards okay so let's find them where are they they're supposed to be alphabetical lovely layered cards or there are also some like these lace cards um garden cards where's my lovely layered cards they're usually here where are they hmm I don't see them well, they are very layered and sometimes they have like as much as four or five layers. We've done a couple of those. So if you're interested in those, you can um, have a look on the on the videos. Look for lovely layered cards. Oh, here we go. Here are lovely layered cards. So what's great about these ones is that it cuts all of these layers sort of success, ex success, successively, success, yeah, different layers and each layer gets smaller and smaller and each layer is different color and then it creates a an image so for example like here with this rose one let's pull it in so you can have a look at it it does come in with a uh, with an envelope I never I never uh, cut envelopes but um, okay so just so you can see this one so this is called a lovely layered card if you ungroup it you'll notice that here's the outside layer it's in, done in white and then there's this like kind of almost a peachy and then a mauve and then a green and then this becomes the inside layer so you're going to cut out five layers um, in paper and then you're going to glue each layer together and it will create this beautiful rose it is these are just gorgeous they're not they're not quick but they're gorgeous and um, they're very impressive. You can add a um, you can add a sentiment, of course, and um, and so this just in, obviously choose your own colors. Um, these are called lovely layered cards. But in addition to the lovely layered cards, let's go back to images. She has a number of these other kinds of cards. She has um, something called. Uh, scoring wait, wait where is it so we talked about the window box cards the lovely layer cards she has pop-up cards she has these uh, fantastic flip cards which is what we're going to complete today um, and I'm trying to think she has these window where is it called window ledge cards let me see if I can find those where is the window? Okay, here we go. So there's these window ledge cards versus window frame cards. So she's like all focused on, you know, it's a window, it's a scene with the flowers and everything. And this is what the actual card looks like. It's a ledge, like, a, you know, and then you build onto the base of the card. And, oh, good, I'm glad, Shelly. Yeah, you build all of these things. And some of them are print and cut elements. Some of them are just cut out elements. And you can pick and choose from different places and put together some really amazing cards okay um, and trying to think what else she also has some seasonal things we talked about but she has this nice this one often goes unlooked but um, there's a seasonal soiree um, which has a lot of things for all the seasons um, there's like Christmas Halloween uh, winter and things like that that 
are like different things if you're going to put on a party so there's like a gift bag and and invitations and things for like cupcake holders and such like that you could really get lost here in all of the offerings and um, it's something that if people didn't know about um, this is just like kind of eye-opening in, in just spend some time and sort of get lost in it she in addition if you have a maker and you have a scoring wheel she has a whole image set called scoring wheel tricks that's this one here and this these are um, these are things that you can make with your maker and your scoring wheel you could do it with your um, scoring stylus for your explore but um, I found with like things like rosettes you know those rosettes like this um, rosettes are beautiful and they work out great with the scoring wheel and all kinds of things things that you'd see in the very old-fashioned either quilting or dressmaking um, is a lot of a lot of uh, overlap from paper from fabric to paper here and really just beautiful designs that you could play with and and have all kinds of embellishments whether they're for your scrapbooking pages or for cards but let's say okay you're just getting started and you're like I just want to make a card Rita um, I just want to make an anagraphic card but I don't want to have to like pick and choose whatever let's just make one card um that is sort of it's fun um it's fairly easy to do i want to put a sentiment on the inside so let's go back to her um all of those images and i want to point you to this grouping it's called if i can find it it's called fantastic flip cards so what this has here are these these cards and they're folded in such a way that when you open them the little feature in the front just kind of flips around like this so it's cute but it's not like overwhelmingly like so much work um and so this is where these are okay and there are a number of them including this this one with the circle and they've got all these different kinds of designs square and sort of an uh a rectangle there's all different kinds the heart one and a certain an oval one um, just really pretty one so what you would want to do is grab whichever one you like so I'm gonna grab this one over here um, and now I want to put a sentiment on the inside so there are a bunch of sentiments here and we're gonna choose one of one of those maybe you need uh, you know a get well card real quick for someone you heard about you know your friend in the hospital or something or just you forgot to send a birthday card or something like that um so or anniversary let's choose anniversary so we're, we're gonna just grab one of these we'll choose have a happy anniversary here so we're gonna grab um nancy you can do the um parts of these in the joy Okay, the definitely the um, you can use these things here, the sentiments in the joy for sure, and some of the elements. The big, big parts of this um, usually you cannot do in the joy because the joy is smaller. Okay, but you could certainly um, build a card with all of these elements, and I've done that, and it, they're just as beautiful. So, yes. Um, okay, so we're going, we're grabbing this card and we're grabbing this sentiment and we're going to insert it into our, in, uh, into our canvas down here. Okay. Let's get rid of this one here that we brought in before. Oop. Just let me get rid of this. Now these come in with a with an envelope. I don't ever use the envelope. So the first thing that I do is ungroup it and I just get rid of the envelope. I mean, if you wanna use the envelope, that's fine. But I just, for me, I just use plain envelopes. Um, okay, so it comes in and it's, it's not exactly the size that I want it to be. I want it to be kind of like a five by seven card. All right, but which means when it cuts out, it's going to be, this is the length, right? And this is 
the height. So I'm going to take this, I have to regroup it because, um, because I ungrouped it to take away the um, envelope. So, okay, so here is my, my card and there are many like little layers to do this feature. So I'm just gonna drag this whole thing. Make sure you do it all together because otherwise your other little elements won't change size, okay? So normally when I'm doing these cards, I usually do the width at about 10 and a half inches, um, maybe 11. The maximum you can do Let's do 10 and a half. The maximum you can do um, with the Explore or the Maker is 11 and a half, 11.5. So you can't really go further than that. That's for one of the measurements. And also at about 10 and a half, 11 inches, that's gonna fit into a regular size envelope, okay? So here we have our card and it has all of these little elements. And if I ungroup it, I'll show you what those elements are. So we've got this little frame and then a smaller frame. Then we have this nice detail piece like a lattice, this that goes behind there, and then this, and this is our base of our card. So let's move all those pieces out of the way because now we wanna take our, um, our sentiment and we want to put it on the card so that when we cut the card the sentiment writes on the card just like this okay so we have our sentiment and we're going to want to bring it forward because we can't see where it's going um, and the way that it came in it's not because we've been playing with the other images it's not at the top of our screen so to do that you have to go up here to arrange, okay, you click on arrange and you'll see that you have a couple of options. So um, the options are send to back, move backward, move forward, or send to the front, okay? This is basically like consider you're working on a desktop and you have a, a pile of papers and you want to see that paper that's on the bottom come forward. You're arranging the papers. That's what um, arrange is, okay? So we want our, our sentiment to arrange to the front so that we can kind of see where we want to put it on the card. So we're going to choose send to front. Okay, so now when I move it around, it's on top of, it's in front of all of our other elements for the card. This is good. And we can actually um, sort of make, change the size if we wanted to. Like I might make this a little bit like this so that when it's, yeah, I like this because it's going to line up with where the cutouts here are. Right, so as I as I arrange it and decide where I want to put it, I like this. So I'm going to then select the entire card, but not these elements. Don't touch those elements because um, that will change the color of them. Because uh, what we're going to do next. So once you select both your sentiment and your base of your card, you're going to go down here to attach. And it's a little paper clip, all right? And you're gonna click on the paper clip. Now, it's attached. Now, when you go to cut this out, in addition to cut, doing the cutting and the scoring, you're going to have an option to add your pen to write the sentiment, okay? That's it. That's all you need to do to get the sentiment inside of a card. I know people are like obsess over this, but it's really very simple. And I'm gonna show you, um, let's go ahead and send this to our maker so you can kind of see what we're doing, okay? So I'm gonna hit make it, and you see that it cuts it out. It, it sort of decides in a range of, you know, the colors, it always, it always sort of separates everything by the the um, mats. So in this case, it's purple. You don't have to choose purple, but um, in this case, it's purple, and I'm going to need four sheets of 
some color, like variation of color. And you can use patterned paper. Um, you can use, uh, you know, whatever. I actually wanted to show you this. I found on the Cricut, oh, sorry. I found these on the Cricut website. I, I, don't know how, I don't know if they're new or if they're old and they're getting rid of it, but they're selling now um, Anna Griffin paper. So if you're a big paper fan, they're selling these packs of paper um, of Anna Griffin and they're, they're good size packs. They're like, I don't know, 20 sheets of double-sided paper, Anna Griffin on the Cricut website. This one here is Rose, but there's also Francis, Lila, and Camilla. So if you are a paper fan and you're looking to get your hands on some anagriff paper, which can be a little hard to come by, check out the Cricut website because they do have them. It's obviously not packaged in a way that it's like, you know, fancy or anything. But if you're just a paper person like I am, um, you don't care about that, you know. So, um, so, there's, so there's that. So you can use, obviously, patterned paper. Um, I just picked out a bunch of pinks that I liked. And um, I'm just going to get my papers ready. I've got some pinks. And, oh, I've got all different... Like I said, I'm a little bit discombobulated today. Um, here, is this it? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I need four um, sheets of paper. This is the paper. This is the one that I want to show you how to do the, um, how to do, and I need a 12 by 12 sheet of paper for that. Here we go. Got a pink. By the way, you can move around in the um, in the mats, and I want to show you a cute little trick um, that I don't think everybody knows about, but it's really really interesting. At this stage of the game, before you pick your material, you can actually move something from one mat to another mat if you decide okay so for instance let's say I wanted to move this frame to mat number two this is mat number three I want to move it to mat number two simply click on it and you'll see that there are these three dots right here click on that three dots and you'll get a little pop-up box and it says move object and you also get hide selected so let's say you don't want to cut it you can hide it but if I want to move it I choose move object and there are all my mats so if I decided for instance I wanted it to be on a totally different mat I would choose new or if I wanted it to be on this mat instead of the current mat I would choose that mat like this and then boom there's our mat with our new item there isn't that great? It's a cute little feature. Um, also, to save paper, I take these things. This is the cutout. So I will move this in here. And that's the great part about having this preview is that you can move things around so that it fits on the paper and you can conserve paper. So we're going to hit continue. And I am on a maker. So normally when it comes up, and I'm going to choose medium cardstock. Um, the maker will tell me that I have the ability to use my single scoring wheel, which, believe it or not, I do have that, but believe it or not, right before this, this video started, um, I knocked my brand new um, maker, like the, the little tool caddy, over, and now I have to, oh, I'm, I'm a comedy of errors today. So I'm not going to use my scoring stylus because I'd have to go like, hunting for it on the ground um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to the scoring stylus what size is my image with the sentiment I'd say it's about like I don't know three four inches I kind of eyeballed it Cassandra um, okay, so this is a scoring stylus. Now, if you have an explore machine, this is what you would use for scoring, and that's how you would achieve this kind of uh, effect. 
But if you have a maker, you can also use a scoring wheel. Unfortunately, I do have a maker and I have a scoring wheel, but it's on the floor somewhere and I couldn't reach it in time for this video. So I'm gonna use this. So how do I change, how do I tell my machine, I don't want the scoring wheel, I'd rather use a scoring stylus. Well, easy, go up here, edit tools. Click on that, it gives me a choice. I want to either do single scoring wheel, which is a recommended, yes I understand that, or I wanna do the scoring stylus, which is what I wanna do. And then I'm gonna hit apply. Okay, so now you see this is our main, <laughs> um, what size of cardstock measurement? Um, uh, the cardstock that I'm using, generally speaking, I use uh, either 8.5 by 11 inch cardstock when I'm making a regular card or 12 by 12, whichever I have. Um, in this particular case, I think it's 8.5 by 11, Cassandra. Okay, so all right, I've changed my scoring stool but uh, but what I want to also point out is down here it says I need additional tools midnight pen so I have that and obviously you can choose whatever color you want you don't have to put in the midnight one but um, this is what I happen to have so these are the additional tools that I'm using with my maker for this particular for the base of the card you see so I'm going to move you um, and so you can see the actual machine doing the work, okay? And I'm going to, so you won't be able to see my screen, but you'll see the machine. Let's see, okay. All right, so now I'm going to take my mat, which I've loaded with my paper. Actually, it's 12 by 12. <laughs> Charlene, you're so cute. Um, and I'm going to put it into my machine. But before I hit the go button, which is over here and it's blinking, let's see, can you see that? Okay, before I hit the go button, I'm gonna take my stylus. Now I have, this is my blade, right? You don't have to change that out, just leave that in there. Make sure the clamp is on there good. But then I'm gonna take my stylus, open this clamp. This is what this clamp is for. All right, make sure it's clicked in there. Close the clamp. And now I'm ready to do, first what it will do is the scoring. Then it's gonna do the writing. So it will prompt me for the pen. Then it will do the cutting. Okay, so I hit my little button. And the you can't see the screen, but it's preparing the screen and it's deciding does it have enough paper, all of that stuff, and it's doing just the scoring for you, okay? Using that scoring stylus. And then it's like 60% done. When it's ready to be done, it will say 100% on my screen. And then I get a dialog box and it says load the midnight pen into clamp A and hit go. So I'm going to take out my scoring stylus and I'm going to put my pen in and remember this is different than the joy you have to hold the bottom here and click it in that's different than the joy close the clamp and when you have it in there you hit this flashing button again and it's going to start writing my sentiment onto the card so it's a little backward, you know, like um, it doesn't do the cutting until the very last bit, but as long as you trust the system, it will, it will work out just fine. And it goes through um, some of the things that people have asked me about the, about the writing is why does it like write things not in order? Like you would write on a, on a, um, like if you hand wrote it, like sometimes you'll see it starts at the top and then it moves to the bottom and or it goes over to the left and then to the right. Um, I was told that that was because they want to make sure that the ink dries and doesn't smear on your card. And I have yet, I've been doing this for years and I have yet to have smeared ink that I didn't cause myself. Like the machine has never caused smeared ink for me. So um, that, 
that to me, that's pretty amazing. Um, and it's taking that sediment and it's putting it exactly where I want it. And when it does the third step, which is the cutting, uh, you'll notice and we'll take it off the mat, okay? Any, any like just questions or anything about where we're at? I know people have been asking. So as far as cardstock goes, um, I generally use either Cricut cardstock or I use some from Michaels. I get like this, this is the size that I get, eight and a half by 11. It mostly works for cards and they sell it, it's actually on sale this week, in packs of like 50 and usually either in one color, like white or black or cream, or they do like kind of like a, a rainbow thing. Maybe it's like citrus or I don't know, greens or yellows or blues, whatever. Um, and uh, it's pretty cheap. It's this, this week, I think, in the United States, it's like $5.99 for a pack. And if you buy one, you get one free. I've seen it cheaper. Um, but, you know, if you're looking to just kind of stock up on, on cardstock, this cardstock cuts beautifully on all Cricut machines. I don't know. I, I don't think that they designed it that way, but it cuts beautifully um, on all Cricut machines, and it's definitely a good value. So if you're looking to kind of build up your uh, paper stash, uh, it's a great thing to do. Um, you know, a lot of people use the 12 by 12 cardstock, but for me, when I'm making cards, it seems a bit of a waste because I end up using only, you know, only about this size card. So that, you know, I've been doing this for years and, and for me, that's the best value. I'm a pretty frugal person and that's what I would recommend. Now that's not to say that 12 by 12 cardstock isn't useful. Um, but you know, it, because it's great for our bigger projects when we need a bigger space. Um, but it also works great with the joy because you can basically take the, the cardstock and cut it in half like this. And this half is actually the size of a Cricut Joy mat. So perfect. Um, and actually, um, the other trick is that you can take this eight and a half by 11 inch sheet and cut it ex exactly in half the lengthwise, and it creates two cards that are the insert cards. We've done that before. Okay, the writing is done, and now the cutting is almost done. And I'm gonna make sure I take my pen out because otherwise it will dry up. Um, the pens are really good. Uh, I, I like the pens. I know other people come up with different um, options, but I always use the Cricut pens. So, all right, so let's take it out. Put a cap on my pen. And here is, so this cardstock brand is called uh, Mike. This one here is actually Michael's too, but it's a 12 by 12. It's Michael's the store, Michael's, called Recollections brand uh, cardstock, and it's available at all Michael's stores. And again, you know you can use other, um, other brands, but I just really like them. It really cuts really, really well for, uh, for Cricut, I found. It cuts really well for Cricut. So here is our main piece, and you'll notice, get up real close, there's our sentiment, and then you'll also see there are our folds our score lines and we're going to the way that these cards work is we're going to fold now granted using the stylus is not as good as using the um sc the scoring wheel but if you don't have an explore i mean a, a maker or the scoring wheel then you know you just still have to you know fold it so we're just kind of folding it at all of the score lines and there are several here and this one actually goes this way and that is our card Okay, so it cut, cuts open like this. And this is where your little embellishment piece is going to go and flip open like this. That's why it's called a flip card. Cassandra, what I do is um, I, the size of my main piece of card, um, when I pull it in, and you might want to rewind after this is over and, and go back, but I, but I generally uh, size the cards to about uh, 11 inches wide. 
So let's go ahead and I'll go back and just kind of review for you um, how this works. So I'm gonna cancel and we won't cut the rest of this card, but just so you can see how it is that we arrange this card to be cut out. So again, to find the card, we're going to images, okay? And we're going to search in the image, main image session, image sets. We're gonna type in Anna's, A-N-N-A -N -N -A apostrophe S. We're going to scroll through all of these pick what we want to do. In this case, we're picking a fantastic flip card. Choose that one, choose a sentiment, bring it into our, um, our space. Move all these out. All right, let me just get rid of this. Get rid of this. All right, so we have, there's our card with the envelope. I usually ungroup it up here, remove the envelope, because I don't use the envelopes they give me. Then I regroup this. I change the size up here to a width of 11 inches, 11 and a half, you, you decide, but 11 inches will pretty much cover a regular size envelope. Okay. And then I take my sentiment. I have to ungroup this because I want to add the sentiment to the main piece. So I want to move out the main piece. Let me just grab these guys out of the way. We want these to cut separately. We don't want them to be cutting out. I turn my sentiment into, and I m go to a range, send it to the front so I can see where I want it. And it, somebody asked what size this is. It's about three inches. And you can change the, the size or change wherever it goes, wherever you want. Decide, okay, I want it here. And then, select both things, the sentiment and the base card, okay? And go down here to attach. Once you do that, your sentiment is attached to your base of your card. And then it's just a matter of cutting it out the way that I just showed you with using the scoring stylus or the wheel and a pen and then your paper. So, um, so that is how you use some of the images. I just want to turn you on to, there are so many images available to you in Design Space. And especially if you are a Cricut Access customer, um, you know, the, this is, or a subscriber or whatever you want to call it, member. Um, there, there's so many images that I think a lot of people, when they just get a Cricut, they're like, okay, now I have to find images. And they, they go searching and they spend hours and hours and hours on Google and Etsy and everything else when all this stuff is built in. And it's better to start with that and sort of get your feet wet. And then when you start to get creative and you're like, okay, I want to make my own sentiment or I want to pull in something very specific to the situation, that's when you go outside. But to get started, yeah, definitely replay. We're doing basic like um, cards things basics for cards today so that's you know so if you're new and you really don't know what to do you don't know how to start start first stay in design space it's a little playground there are lots of features here and learn those basics first before you try to i want to do inkscape and i want to you know download svg and i want to you know there's there's so much to do and it can get overwhelming and i understand that so stay simple stay simple and you can achieve it um, yes, it is definitely constant says it's design space is everything. And, and, you know, yes, I, I hear people who are 
pros that are, you know, well, I want, I want to use Inkscape and all that stuff. If you're just beginning, that, so this advice is not for you, but if you're just beginning and you just want to get started and just kind of get your feet wet, stay in design space and learn from these tools and then you build on what you what you learn right so that is uh today's cricket chat i guess it went pretty good considering <laughs> considering i was so discombobulated today i can't believe i've got stuff everywhere paper and all of my tools are on the ground and and uh, i had all these other projects and my printer and everything else and i have to learn my own lesson which is keep it simple and um, and stick with the basics, especially uh, especially you know just remember your basics. Um, oh, good, yeah. Thank you, Charlene. So that is, I think, uh, going to be for today. Um, I can, if if it's helpful to you, I can put together a design space file that will show you these cards, um, and I can post it for you when I replay when I do the replay. Um, let's see. So today's Friday, so this is the end of our eighth week of Cricut Chat. And tomorrow night is our Cricut Date Night at 7 o'clock, so definitely come uh, if, you like, uh, if you like paper projects because we're doing that lighthouse and the light key, lighthouse keepers quarters from SVG Cuts. I'm going to post a file, and we're going to be doing that at 7 o'clock live here on Facebook. Um, and then we will start a whole new week next week. And I, hopefully I'm going to get to veneers and to hopefully fix my print and cut issues. And we've got a lot of stuff to do next week. Um, oh, you can, you can watch on the replay. Thanks, Rosalind. Um, and we will see you all, I hope, tomorrow. If not, we'll see you on Monday morning, 9 o'clock here on Cricket Chat. Hey, tell your friends. Looking to try to get a nice audience, although I love having you guys with me every day. Thank you so much, and you have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves.